And welcome once again to the Titus and Sergio Variety Hour special budget reply podcast. We're a bit later than usual this week and we'll explain why in a minute. Uh, in the meantime, I'm Sergio Paradise and fresh from slamming a cream pie into the face of Alan Joyce, it's the great Titus O'Reilly. Oh, I think a lot of people saw that and thought that was funny and then... I found out the reason the guy did it was because <laughs> he hates gay, gay marriage. marriage. And I, like, I kind of went, oh, how uh-huh. disappointing. You can't just can't do just... it for no for just the fun of it anymore. Uh, exactly. You have well, to for... make a political statement. Uh, when I heard that, I thought, oh, gee, the Three Stooges must have hated gay marriage. <laughs> They're really against <laughs> it. But then when you looked into what did happen the other day, the, the actual cream pie he used was lemon cream meringue, yeah. which is pretty gay in itself, you <laughs> yeah. have to say. <laughs> Um, now we should explain we didn't do yep. one on Tuesday because I uh, or Monday rather I woke up on Sunday and just literally had no voice. Laryngitis. You can probably hear it now a bit still, and I thought, well, someone's prayers have been answered. <laughs> um, and so I had no voice, and so on Sunday night, I think it was, I well, we actually I said, well, let's move it to Tuesday because yep. I, I think my voice might be better by then. Of course, it actually wasn't. I had no voice on Monday and a little voice on Tuesday, but not good. And um, it's still not very good. And uh, so I texted you and said, look, mate, my voice is not r- great, rooted still. and don't think I'm going to be able to do it maybe. And you sent back and said, well, that's all right because I think I might have broken my ankle. <laughs> oh, no. And I said, well, hang on, mate. It's not a competition. <laughs> oh, I'll see your, your laryngitis and yeah. raise you one. So you almost broke your ankle. You did, yeah. quite, you did ligament damage Yeah, you did it. ligament damage. And, you know, that's what happens when you're running away from the cops and you're wearing one of those electronic ankle bracelets, <laughs> you know. Um, no, I did it. Rolled my ankle at kids' footy training, which is pathetic oh, really? in itself. But um, you're but filling yeah. in for Richmond, <laughs> so, so it, it's. I'm still hobbling. I'm still yeah, you on, went to I'm, the. You got a scan and everything. Oh, I'm didn't still you? on the hobble, but uh, it's it, it wasn't broken. It wasn't snapped. Right. Well, I was pretty sure it wasn't snapped. But uh, yeah, so you couldn't talk and I couldn't walk, and so that's and then what, today you've come in with one eye oh, completely red and yeah. and um. <laughs> Well, physical and, and water. Wreck. It's like you're just constantly watering. It oh, is. Oh, I know. I woke up this morning. You know, when you you feel like you've got something in your eye, and I couldn't find anything, and so I'm on the bloody conjunctivitis eye drops, and I don't know if they're doing anything. And, yeah. Oh, I just, just pour whiskey in it. So, yeah. You know, that usually works. Well, it helps so we, everything else. So we have been in the wars, and we do apologise because we don't like to. We've been actually pretty good in doing two a week uh, this year. So. Um, we are sorry about that, but it was literally beyond our ability. Someone wrote, uh, someone said to me uh, when I called for questions last night and mentioned I hadn't had a voice, they said, you know, couldn't you have just done it anyway? And, and I think they said mime it or something. I said, <laughs> we could have done it in Morse code, just an hour of tapping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would take a bit more work. To, to listen to and yeah. work it out. But it'd be, you know, it'd be worth it. For those it, that but... know Morse code off by heart. Yeah. Um, but we, a big big thank you to our supporters, of course. We're sorry we missed that one, but um, people still sign we'll up. We'll make up for it. We will make up by, by ranting on longer today, probably. Yeah, probably. And um, we do thank you for your support. We couldn't do it without you. Now, uh, Cody wrote in, did your voice go inspecting the ground in China as preparation for the Power Suns game? <laughs> Bit of the... They keep talking about sandstorms happening, and I yeah. keep thinking. Gee, I of, hope there is a sandstorm. I keep thinking of Darude. You know, remember that song, oh, Sandstorm? Yeah. Um, the other thing is, Tim Kavanagh wrote in, "Is it true you lost your voice after spending a night at the Ivy with a cohort of NRL players and administrators and other <laughs> colourful identities?" Oh, well, I we, wish. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Look, we'll get onto that one. That's a uh, fantastic story, but I, I don't think you'd struggle to get into the Ivy, quite frankly. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Well, Why neither, is that? Neither of us can get into any nightclubs anymore. I don't look, I'm not. That's you just saying I'm not good looking enough, basically. Nah, nah, basically. We'll, we'll, we'll wait and see when we get to Adelaide. We'll see if we can get into the crazy horse strip joint. Yeah, I, no, I don't know if I would get in the Ivy. Although I do have a lot of cocaine on me. Yeah, you always. That or, way, you always get plenty in. of headphones in your back pocket. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, we should mention uh, while we were uh, away, basically. Um, the great Lou Richards passed away, so we should yeah, just at sad. least acknowledge that. Um, he'd had a great innings, though. Well, 94, so that, that- 94, he'd, um, I mean, there's been lots of lots of discussion this week about, you know, whether he the AFL should have made him an official legend, but whether that's official or not, I think everyone who's ever watched anything on TV or, or enjoyed footy in any regard would know that Lou Richards was a legend on a million things, and 
And as far as the media is concerned, like like D-list hacks like us doing this podcast probably would never have happened if, if Lou Richards hadn't made the football media what he did. He, so he was it's the, his fault. He, 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 you can blame <laughs> we're him. doing this. God, hey, you shouldn't speak ill of the dead, but you can blame Lou. Um, he was the one of the first, if not the very first, who actually made coverage of football entertaining and not just stats and figures. Did, did you know him at all when you were at nine? No, I saw someone ask you that the other day. I I never really officially worked on the footy show, sort of, so I didn't there. But I used to pop in now and again to do various things and you'd often see him in the in in the office there and he was mm. he was he was like the mascot and everyone loved him. And my I only had the, this one Lou Richards story and there was this Friday popped in he was talking to a couple of the producers about something he was going to be doing on the Sunday footy show. Mm. And uh, he's going, Carl, I need a line. I need a line. I need a one-liner. Come on, that, that shit out. That shit out. Come on, I need something. And I just thought of a line. I said, what, what, what about this, Lou? And he turned to me and, who are you? Goes, it's not a bad line, son. I might use it. Do you mind if I use that? <laughs> I said, Lou, not only do I not mind, I would be honoured if you used it. And he goes, there's no need to get fucking precious about it. <laughs> so that's my <laughs> Luridge story. And he used the line. Oh, and that good. was it. Um, but he was, he was extremely well loved at Channel 9, and I'm sure he was at Channel 7 and everywhere he was. So, mm. yeah, sad thing with the footy, footy industry and Collingwood. It's the end of a bit of an era, really, and all those guys. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, everyone from Jack Dyer and yeah. Teddy Witt and uh, Bobby Davis. I guess Ron Brash is the only one sort of left, left of those sort that, of yeah. that legendary era. Um, so... Uh, I, there's a state funeral coming up, so that'll and that's, they might be televised as well. Yeah, that's next saying. Wednesday, I think next yeah. week. Um, now moving on to something we touched on at the start. Uh, this week we have the China game. Can't wait for this. It, Cannot um, wait for this. It's been interesting because I've read up about this a bit, and because there was so there's been so many fun stories. It's a bit, yeah. and I can't tell whether you know in the lead up to the Olympics. Yeah, every single Olympics, you hear that there's logistical nightmares, and it's yeah. it's going to be terrible. The stadium won't be ready, and, and then the- it seems to always work out okay. I yeah. mean, there are times where there are problems, and like everyone's going to die of the Zika virus at the last one. Yeah. So it's been a bit like the, that with this. It has. So some of the things is there was a story about how it's going to be 31 degrees and. Sandstorms, yeah, and heavy pollution, and, and the, heavy. Uh, and but the authorities read, have warned locals not to go, go outside. outside and all that. <laughs> but I've read since that that's kind of not actually true. It's going to be about twenty-seven degrees. Yeah. The pollution not that bad, not as and bad no as sandstorm, can. unfortunately. Because <laughs> yeah, we're all hoping it would be like well, a, watching Mad Max yeah. <laughs> Fury Road, but instead it's going to. I want to say all the players wearing surgical masks. Yeah, but apparently it's actually not going to be as bad as they were. Yeah, I, th- I think you're actually right. We, we're all hoping for yeah. complete disaster, but it'll probably end up being just another footy game. Well, they also you know? were struggling for a while, and this would have been probably a disaster given the whole premise of this is to try and win over China, right? Mm. There's no other reason you'd Why go. Why else would you do it? And uh, that they, they was looking like they weren't going to be able to get a TV deal in China as recently as this week. Oh, and therefore, right. the only people that would see it would be the 10,000 at the ground. Right. And uh, the Chinese population is a bit bigger than 10,000, <laughs> I've been it, led to really? believe. Yeah. And so really, you know, to get a – I mean, if you wanted to just see, have 10,000 people watch something, just have it at Spotless Stadium. <laughs> yeah. You don't need to go to China. <laughs> we'll just play GWS at any hand. Although yeah. it is easier to get to China than Spotless Stadium. <laughs> Western Sydney is a bit of a nightmare. Easier, easier to get into Shanghai Better than Better infrastructure, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so of food too. So anyway, that's apparently been... Um, so that's apparently now they have got some sort of TV deal in place. Now, when I say TV deal, I don't think it's going to be like prime time broadcast no. on every channel or something, but there is going to be some... Are they talking up the potential TV viewing audience in China? Because well, they always they they always do. It's always a billion people watching it. Well, they say about the Melbourne Cup every year, you know. Yeah, so I don't, you know, they probably will say that. Um, So the other thing that's been an issue, and I think this has been a little bit of a true issue, is Rodney Ede had a real. Yeah, he, yeah, he wasn't, wasn't happy. happy about the whole thing. Well, the thing I about he got a whack from the AFL over that. Yeah, he did. He and got a phone call because then yeah. the chairman came out and yeah. said uh, positive things. Yeah. But when you think about it, there is no doubt that having to go to China in the middle of the year for a guy like Rodney Ede, who let's be honest, Ede's going to be lucky to keep his job. Yeah, he basically has to make the finals or or 
Yeah, yeah, he has to sort of, gone. he has to get very close to finals yeah. at least, you know, to even because otherwise he's off. So suddenly you have to go to China now. The thing about it is, it's a twenty-one hour flight. Yeah, not all the players have a lot of most of them are in just economy. Yeah, so except for, Gary. Gaz. Is Gaz up front? I thought it was the taller players that give Taller him- players and Gaz. I saw it on the news last night. They had the TV cameras at um, at the airport. Yeah. And uh, one of the players said, uh, here's where we're going over there. And you saw Gaz go through the business class door. Well, get Gaz would have enough money to be able oh, to probably could, buy his upgraded, upgraded a thousand times over. He could have upgraded the whole team if he wanted to. <laughs> um, so that's a bit of an issue for them that they're all going to be there. Now, they've also been stuck on... Um, on the, the tarmac in Singapore, yeah, apparently, a for a, of while, hours this for a morning. couple of hours. Yeah. So that's got to be fun. Um, so, look, it'll be interesting to see if it's a... My thing is about this whole China game is the only reason you would do it is if you thought there was a, a legitimate chance of winning over the Chinese for a yeah. lot of money coming towards the sport. And I just can't see that... No, I can't see it happening. I mean, they're sort of they're soccer mad Certainly over there. Certainly not in the short term. They're soccer mad and they're basketball mad. Now yeah. I know Melbourne United are actually flying over there um, tomorrow to play some yeah, basketball games. Yeah, but they love games. basketball. Though, they yeah. love it over there, and and of course basketball too is an indoor sport, so they don't have the, the you know, problems the with the problems smog. of sandstorms. But uh, yeah, look, you, you just can't see it catching on in any sort of meaningful way in the short or long term because there's, there's no facilities, there's no infrastructure, um, there's no basic interest. You well, know? I remember how successful Melbourne's trip was there. That one over they, like they play? They play? Was it Brisbane? Oh, I can't even remember now. Well, well that's right. It was, it was such a lame. It was a train wreck. Um, Ash N wrote, um, can you gentlemen, and put in brackets, I use the term loosely. Thank a bit, you. bit harsh. Um, please tell us the actual benefits of China game, what they supposedly are. Oh, well, we, I just, we just tried to. <laughs> We're struggling to find a benefit. Well, Other David than- Koch thinks it's going to open up a whole huge new market, new market for Port Adelaide and they're oh. all going to be rich. Oh, I, look, you know. And, you know. I just can't see it. Come on, Kochi. Kochi's a, Kochi's a money man. He should know better than, than to assume that. Yeah. But, yeah, the, the, look, the only people it really benefits is is the ridiculous probably number of AFL officials who have gone on the junket and are getting the business class airfares and the shopping trip in Hong Kong on the way back. Yeah. But other than that, I mean, even Channel 7 aren't too happy about it because it's costing them a bomb. My favourite, all- even the AFL aren't that happy. My favourite right. sport my favorite sport at the moment is watching everyone pretend it's not nuts. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know, they're all pretending it's yeah. great, but, you, you know, you talk to any of them, off the record, like yeah. behind the scenes, and I've had a few, I've done a few gigs and stuff, and they bump into some of them, and they, they're all just like, oh, this won't be happening again. No, no. So that's kind of a bit strange. Um, Willie Royal wrote in, apparently um, it's this is a logistical nightmare, or is that just a polite way of saying Koshy is a pain in the ass? <laughs> pain in the ass <laughs> slash logistical nightmare no, is pretty much the same thing. Every time you hear the phrase uh, logistical nightmare from now on, think posh Kochi's yeah, a pain just in the ass. Just Kochi with a surgical mask on. Oh, he really, he really is not uh, doing great thing there. It's, it is all, it's just, if, if Koshi wasn't at Channel 7 at the number one broadcaster yeah. and, it, you know, that's what's driven the whole He's thing. He's an important figure down there at Channel 7, so that has driven it. But as I say, the whole thing is a fairly... Or completely pointless exercise. Um, th- there's not going to be money made by anyone. I can't imagine after all the bills are paid. Yeah. Um, the only upside would be if there was a sandstorm or <laughs> shocking pollution or something. But I think it's just going to end up being another pretty dull game of footy between the, Port Adelaide. The and danger Gold is, Coast. is Port Adelaide have looked wobbly in the last few rounds. Yeah. So if they do come back, I know they got a bye week off yeah. after it. But if they come back and then just and this could happen anyway, even without China. Mm. Return to what they've been the last few years and miss finals. It's yeah. all going to be blamed on on China and on, that uh, week on in China, China and not focusing on the footy. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, they've had the couple of weeks and you know it just hasn't worked. So we'll wait and see. But I, I've got to say though, I am looking forward to watching it on Sunday. Oh yeah, yeah. It's going to be hilarious. It'll probably be just fine. Um, interestingly, this week Scott Pendlebury, he's expecting. Uh, his 
first child. Uh, his wife, uh, Alex, is almost due, uh, due this weekend. This weekend. But as we know, usually first babies are a bit late, so he might be okay. But he has said that uh, he's um, ready to not go or leave as late as half time uh, to be get back and be with his child. Well, he may as well quit the game at half time. All his teammates have for most of the other <laughs> yeah, games that's... this year. I didn't realise they were all having babies is what I thought when I read that. So um, I worry about this because the only time, you know, someone involved in football should want to spend time with their family is if they've just been sacked. Yeah, once you're delisted, that's when you have no choice. But but I guess it's that old, you know, um, sportsman having their first baby, they have to be there and, and, and it's a good look. It makes him look, you know... Like a, a, a new age man. Oh, but it makes him look like you're putting the team makes second. Him soft. How can yeah. you put? How can you put your? How can you put Collingwood second? I guess the difference is, uh, in anyone's life, the you know having your first child or having mm. any child, but especially you know your first child, it's it's a milestone moment in your life. It happens not that many times in your life when playing in a. Losing Collingwood match, he can do every week. <laughs> oh, there's the, not a, it's, it comes up pretty regularly. On the other side of the coin, you can have as many kids as you like any time you want, but you don't get to play league footy too often. Oh, and, yeah. you know, unless you is that what they're playing Collingwood at the moment? <laughs> Who um, are they playing this week? Will it matter if? Yeah, they're playing. Well, no, that won't matter because they're playing GWS. Oh, they get flogged anyway. There. Right. So they're probably going to be get flogged because GWS after losing last week. Yeah, they'll come out. They're going to be wanting to show they're not weak yeah. and soft because they look pretty soft in that last quarter against St uh, Kilda. Yeah, they that did. was like a game of chicken, and GWS flinched. They did. I, I must. And the admit, whole league saw it. That three quarter time, I thought. Yeah, somebody's going to run away with this game in the last quarter, and it's not going to be St Kilda. Mm. Uh, I thought, and GWS they just folded the tipping like a last week. Cards. How did you? How many did you tip? Oh, a couple, eight. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got a couple, if if that. I can't remember if I got two or three, but it was bad. Yeah, I, I think I got three. I think I tipped the oh, one I'm I most ashamed Freo. of. I tipped Hawthorne. Oh, you got I got Hawthorne. See, yeah. I tipped Melbourne, which See, is stupid. I, I, I knew. I just knew. I tipped Carlton was... over Collingwood. Oh, did you? I yeah, thought, I thought Collingwood would get that that one. I've always got confidence in in Collingwood's, uh, <laughs> you know, uselessness. Right. Uh, you know, Scott Penderbury has a basketball background. Oh, really? Yeah. Just, just just occurred to me. Somebody mentioned it. Oh, he should go to China with yeah. United. Um, <laughs> Shane wrote in. He did raise a good question. Would Collingwood have more success if Buckley left at halftime instead of Penderbury? <laughs> <laughs> But you know, I, what? I don't know whether Alex Pendlebury would be happy <laughs> if Bucks walked into the delivery room. Oh, mate. I don't think you want Bucks running the strategy of a birth. <laughs> <laughs> it's just those forward entries would be no good. Yeah, you know, it's not what you want. Um, now the A League Grand Final was on Sunday night. Did you watch it? I, I watched the second half um, purely only because I was out sort of early. And then got watching home. the Melbourne game. Yeah, and and what watched the second Melbourne half? Melbourne lose the Hawthorne. Yeah, well, disgrace that was. Um, and then and then the the penalty shootout, and I've got to say, there's, there's I'm not a massive soccer enthusiast, and I but I know amongst soccer fans there's always the argument as to whether, um, not only just a normal game but especially a, a grand final game mm. should be decided on a penalty shootout. But I've got to say they're pretty riveting to watch. Yeah, I just find like, I I I still. I, I'm a I'm a soccer fan, right? Yeah. So I'm saying this like I'm you know I'm not a news limited reporter, right? I'm not trying yeah. to like run it down. So actually, but the one thing I've always struggled with is uh, with with soccer where it does. So soccer, I think, can be the most exciting thing ever. Even mm. like some of the times I've been at games and you know it'd be a freak goal or mm. a, a, you know goal when they need it, all the tensions, right? It does that better than anything. So the highs and lows of soccer, I think, the highs are even higher than in yep. some other sports, but it um it does suffer from times like where you have you know something decided by penalties that's as big as a grand final. Yeah, I know. I know a lot of people don't like the criticism of that, but it is a legitimate criticism. Every sport has legitimate criticisms of yeah. it where it could improve, and it's one thing that just doesn't resonate with people. Yeah. It's never fun. Like it would be better if they just kept playing until somebody scored, even well, if it was eight hours later. And either the that, or I mean, if, if ever a sport needed a um. Ability to have a rematch or something, you know, yeah. like 
Yeah, why? Well, yeah, well, that's a fair point. Why, why wouldn't they consider that? I mean, well, the other thing is, the money I is what about best of three? Yeah, that's what they do in you know, the NBA. And they it do in lots well. of other sports, yeah. and it actually would or make best it. of seven. They do in the NBA. For yeah, the, for it would the, actually make sense, you know, yeah. or like first to two wins or something. You yeah, know? like so, something like that. More would money to be make. made, more broadcast rights. Yeah, yeah so it makes some, sense. Anyway, I think I don't think they've really got it nailed in how the uh, how best to actually. <laughs> The FFA, there's a lot of things they haven't quite nailed. <laughs> but it did one thing that was probably the a lot of the this thing was is, my highlight. I've well, the say. thing is, it didn't get a lot of coverage. Um, what the match? Yeah, you're talking about. Yeah. I mean, compared to you know, it it, uh, it should get more than it does. Um, you know, when you when you had danger, uh, when you had um Selwood and Pendlebury's um little minor argument run more front pages yeah. than the A-League grand final. But uh, one and, thing that and, got yeah, a lot of... Right, and there was a Melbourne team in it. Yeah. One thing that got a lot of uh, mention is uh, celebrity chef George Calambaris was being charged with assault over, over an altercation that occurred after the grand final on Sunday night. Now, he's a big victory fan. He is. So he actually was on the field after yeah. the game and uh, the victory lost to Sydney FC if you didn't see it on penalties. Um, now... He confronted a fan in the stands. Now, what apparently happened is, uh, have the you crowd, watched the footage? I've yeah, watched I've it. seen it. The crowd were giving it to him about a whole bunch of things, and then <laughs> you could hear someone say, "Pay your staff, you dodgy bastard." <laughs> um, now, apparently, like a lot of people were yelling at that sort of stuff. Yeah. But anyway, he got all angry and walked over to them. Yeah. And it's the whole Sydney Cove, the whole yeah. you know. <clears throat> and he says, starts yelling at one of them, and then he pushes one yeah, of he them. Pushed the bloke in the chest. Which, you know... Oh, well, you know, ha- having said that, I thought it was pretty funny. Um, but to be charged with assault's a bit much. I, I mean, I, I, I well, like do you think- having a crack at George as much as But do you think this but- is a case where... So technically it is assault, right? Under oh, technically the- it is, but... But do you think this is a case, right, where if it was someone who was beloved or a nice person, I was saying probably wouldn't have done it, but I think there's just... Like majority of Australians, I think think George is a total tosser. Yes, and so there's a bit of fun in almost just making oh, you misery. Like a- absolutely, charge it if you can charge him with it. Like you might have let it slide if it was someone else, and but because it's him, they're just like I couldn't agree more. And and look, I've got to say, um, Corey Wicket, who who's sent in a, a question, and I've got to tell you, Corey, you, it's annoyed me because. For for four days I've been sitting on this joke and you've beaten me to it. And when he says is it true, got George got so mad because he hates dealing with penalties on a Sunday. <laughs> yeah. See, oh, for days I've been thinking so, this is why he cracked it because we know there that were quite a few people that pointed that out on the night on Twitter on a Sunday. Um, so. so Corey, what wasn't the only one, but no. it is a good joke. Um, that is why I, I just find I can't find I don't understand George's appeal at all. No, he's look. I I can't understand the appeal of any of them on Master Chef, to be quite honest. But <laughs> but George, especially so, with his polished bald head and his scarves and just. But he always appears angry. Yeah, he's he's an angry little sort of Greek man who, um, for for that reason alone, it's worth yelling out, "Pay your staff, you dodgy bastard!" Well, just then, so you can see how he reacts. Yeah, I think that's right. Look, I don't think he's going to be convicted of. Of, of assault here. You don't but think? he is facing a three-year ban from going to the soccer. Now, that's funny. <laughs> is that true? That is absolutely true. Really? Why? Because it's it's um, an FFA rule or something. I think that... Um, if you do something like that. If you that. do something like that, you could be banned for three years. You know, it's like you know, letting off a flare or something. You, you know, they'll just kick you out. Now, that would be funny that if he was be banned great. from going to the soccer. I hope he doesn't get convicted, but... Uh, Oh, not that I really care I whether do. he gets convicted. I'm desperate for yeah, it. I hope he goes to jail. Now I think about it, I hope he goes to jail. <laughs> 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 I hope he gets deported. <laughs> um, Quinton Secret in, is George Mood a direct result of there being only one type of salt on offer at Allianz Stadium? <laughs> it's Un- true. Unlike Eddie had. Uh, now, uh, one thing we uh, noticed last week is the NRL had an enormous amount of drug busts. They went Didn't on a they? real... Didn't they have an absolute cracker of a week? Oh, there was so many. To give you a sense of it, um, they've had they had four players and an official were all embroiled in scandals over the representative weekend they just had, where they're all playing now. Uh, New Zealand captain Jesse uh, Bromwich was spotted on CCTV 
using an illegal substance along with teammate Kevin Proctor. That was in Canberra. Right. Now... Do they have cocaine in Canberra? Well, I think they'd have a lot of it because, well, you know, one, it's there's a lot pot. of politicians, yeah. but also what else are you going to do? Yeah, exactly. Uh, Get high in Canberra. So that happened. Um, Sydney Rooster uh, Centre, Sean Kennedy, uh, Kenny Dowell, uh, he's also facing drug possession charges after being arrested in Sydney last Thursday. And then on top of that, Cronulla Chairman Damien Keogh uh, was also stood down following similar charges on Friday, while a Sharks under-20 player, Jesse Savage, was arrested later on the weekend. That's as good a week as you could possibly have <laughs> on the gear, isn't it? Well, you just think they're the ones that got caught. Yeah, and, and but Damien Keogh, the, I mean... Former Olympic uh, basketballer. Yeah, um, and he, he was a superstar. He played for the Sydney Kings when the Sydney Kings were at their, at their you know, peak. So he was um, the chairman of the Cronulla Sharks... And so he's been, and so as chairman, he's been caught possessing a prohibitive drug. Yeah. And uh, he's vacated the role um, at the moment. I don't know if that means it's said to allow him to address allegations of possession of an illegal substance. So when they say vacate, it doesn't sound like he's necessarily quit. It sounds like he's just no, stood aside he's, for now. He's standing aside, sort of, yeah. To, while they figure out that, yes, he did take trial. Whether like, he will have to face court or what have you. But I, I did think when he came out for his press conference. On, on Monday or Tuesday to, you yeah. know, to to say, look, you know, my family are backing me all the way, blah, blah, blah. He could have taken his sonnies off. It just, <laughs> it just made him look, look like a dodgy drug user. Yeah. But they, they the, um, the amazing thing about this is they won the premiership last year. Yeah. So really what should be happening is you need to get all the chairman on cocaine. That's the problem. Well, there you go. And not look, a, you know, not enough cocaine. Well, and and is the problem, and and you addressed this in a column you wrote yesterday. Is, is it the problem that the NRL is too full of cocaine, or the NRL inability to cover up cocaine? Oh, is that look, their problem? That's a, that I've always enjoyed how much. So you think about it, it you know what what other industry. Do we, that doesn't involve heavy machinery, basically. <laughs> do people keep a close watch on what you do on the weekend, you know? Oh, well, that's true. And the thing about it that's amazing is uh, we kind of expect, or the media expect, I mean, the media of all people kind of tus- tusking about yeah. drugs, but um, they kind of pretend that, you know, the NRL and AFL and any other code yeah. needs to do more to stop their players taking illicit drugs. And <clears throat> the thing I think about that is, I mean, good luck to them. Imagine having that for a job. You've got to stop a bunch of young 20-year-old men. Who are all getting paid hundreds of thousands who, of dollars yeah, who a year. Who have massive high disposable incomes, yeah. who have access to every nightclub in the run of the joint and are under a lot of stress and pressure mm. all the time. And you've got to stop them, and they're in a society where amongst their peers and groups, drug taking, while not, you know, not everyone is doing it and stuff, but it's not, it's not, it's totally unique. It's, it's not, yeah, it's, no, it's, it's not, not rare. Heavily it's, frowned it's fairly upon. fairly common amongst, amongst youngsters. You know, and yeah. so we turn around and say, well, why aren't the NRL and AFL stopping this? And it's well, like, well, how? The yeah. US government have poured. Billions of dollars into the war on drugs and Billions haven't stopped. A year. Yeah, yeah. Haven't, haven't stopped it. So we're expecting, you know, yeah, Todd, Green- <laughs> Todd Greenberg, the CEO of the NRL, to go right, <laughs> knock it off, guys. Yeah, go go. We had enough of this. <laughs> had enough of this. Next, we'll we'll next. send him to, to the Middle East next. Fix all the problems there once he's fixed this <laughs> drug problem. Oh, exactly. Like I actually, I've said this before. Like for all the mocking we do of the various stupid people that pop up as sports people, and there yeah. are a lot. When I look at the AFL and NRL, you figure it out, you know, what is there, 700 odd players in each, roughly, yeah. give or take. And the amount of them that um, don't do anything particularly stupid or wrong is the vast, vast majority. Yeah, like we focus on the, the, you know, the 2% that yeah. are, but the majority of them do, you know, like, yeah. there is. Well, as far as we know, they do. This, this is what the AFL is good at, is, ma- is making sure we don't know about this stuff. No, nah, but I mean, I don't even know if they are anymore. Like, it's so hard to... Co- but the majority of them, like, I think... The majority of them, like, they drink a bit and they do, you know... As, oh, but, but the majority of them... Grong's always been the, the drug of choice for yeah, footballers. Yeah, but, I mean, 
God, can you remember what you were doing when you were 20? Oh. I mean, I, I, would, I, I would have drank more than any of the AFL players oh, because I didn't have to do anything on the weekend. But when I was 20, I couldn't afford cocaine. No, you yeah. weren't doing cocaine, but you were drinking. Like, oh, absolutely. I actually think, like you know, a fish. If, if someone had to put me in a situation where I had unlimited money, money at yeah. 20 and access to every nightclub and people throwing themselves at me and all and this girls stuff. And pe- yeah, and girls throwing themselves at you because of who you are. And people offering me See, that's drugs sort of and all only, that all the time. That's only come along recently <laughs> for you. <laughs> no, but I was about to say, I wouldn't have, I don't think I would have handled it very well. I'm impressed no. that so many of them actually get through it. And no, not, you're not, right. They're not all doing stupid stuff. I, I don't know what I would have done, but I got through my 20s by being pretty broke Um having women completely disinterested in me yeah. and never getting invited out anywhere. It was pretty easy to stay out oh, of trouble. I was about to say, you, you weren't exactly <laughs> brushing, having a brush with death every week. No, it was you? very easy. When to... you're sitting at home watching telly on your own. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know how I would have gone if things had been different. Um, now, the other thing here is Scott Fellows wrote in, will Cocaine Appreciation Week successfully transition a cough Cross codes to the AFL, giving the roaring success of the NRL's last weekend. Yeah, drug what, week. Drug week. We've had every other week. Um, you know, we've had country week. We well, have it's country week this weekend. Yeah, that's right. The country is game is Essendon. Uh, Essendon. Someone. I was yeah. looking at this five minutes ago, and I can't remember now. And we've had, you know, we have Indigenous week, and we have the women's round, and we have all that. Why not a cocaine week? But how? Or just a drug week. How much did um? Does Kevin Sheedy love coming up with a week oh, or a yeah. game? You know, like he that's his answer to everything. Like, uh, whenever so, as in a plane Geelong, and that's the country round. Oh, right, yeah. So, and and Geelong being you know out of towners, I guess, qualify for country and, and Essendon. Essendon because Kevin suggested it. Is that a <laughs> is well, that Essendon how it once works? tried to fly to Wangaratta, that shows you how, <laughs> and they couldn't even do that. So, that sort of shows you their country roots, yeah. When you think about it. This um, I'm a big supporter of country round because the oh, country, yeah. the country is just it's just uh, better uh, than other than the city. They're just is fun, that right? salt of the earth people oh, in the country. Yeah. Nice, nice <coughs> country people, folk. Yeah, farmers. You, people live in the city are just godless criminals. Yeah. A lot of them. Doing cocaine. Doing cocaine. And going to nightclubs. That's right. Doing, you don't get that sort of gear. Thieving. Gig. Having said that, Bendigo is the ice capital of Victoria, <laughs> apparently. The country, I love the country. It's I often drive through it on the way to my estate. <laughs> yeah. One of my favourite places. I, I always stop in Yay on the way to Buller. That is a, f- a fact. Do you? What yeah. the- Fill up with petrol or fill buy up a pie. Pe- used to, buy used, a custard tart. Used to get a um, a pizza at the Royal Hotel, which is now shut down. Unfortunately, oh, that is sad. That is even sad. your even your pizza buying couldn't keep it. Couldn't in. couldn't couldn't. You're trying to single handedly keep it going. Um, yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. I do like the country. It is. It is. It does look good. It's there. passing through your windscreen as you you zoom to your your estate. It is funny that I I wrote a column a while ago. I might retweet it out because it was about um them holding an inner city round. Yeah. <laughs> they should. Get the, get the Apex gang to appear at half time. <laughs> um, now, this week, another thing we t- touched on earlier, Richmond. Uh, oh, you? how big was this? So students of Sindel South Primary School in Mount Waverley. Yeah, no, it will. Hello to the students. They won't be listening. No. Um, it, they, it's in Melbourne South East. They were um, going to have some Richmond players turn up now, four of them. Now, Serge, originally I thought that was to attend classes, <laughs> but it turns out that they were going to run a footy clinic. They are going to run a footy clinic. Oh, I think, this is not I, uncommon. I'm not sure who was teaching who. <laughs> um, what? The other di- I think disposal the kids might have been yeah. showing them how to... How to uh, Kick and handball. ...play four quarters. Accurately. Um, four Richmond players were due to show up, including Dustin Martin, and they were turned away by the school uh, for not having... Uh, valid or not having at all working with children checks, which is a a check you have to have oh. in uh, Victoria. Um, a, you, you think this is bureaucracy gone mad? Well, I think it is at this level. I mean, it's not like they couldn't have worked this out beforehand. Like a couple of phone calls could have been made perhaps. So you don't think it's a good idea that you think people without working with children checks should be able to work with children? Oh. Are you pro-pedophile? Because <laughs> it's starting to sound like you are. <laughs> 
Hang on. <laughs> I have a working with children check. Do you? I do, indeed. See, I don't, but I never go near children. Well, see, I'm the only one in this. I'm on another sort of list. <laughs> I'm the only bloke who, with a working with a children card, is not allowed within 500 metres of school. <laughs> yeah, I thought they kind of can't, would have cancelled each other out. Yeah. Oh, look, I think this, what happened yesterday is just absurd. I mean, really, I mean, and this, this is a, a, a spillover from the state government this year have introduced a lot stricter yeah. things on this working with children. And look, they're a great idea, although, to, to be honest, um, they're more of a make people feel good than actually Tick a have. box, you yeah, mean. Yeah, because... But it, they, do, they it, would prevent some people from getting them. Yeah, but, but the it does things, make it. I mean, it doesn't make it hard if you... If, if you have never been caught or convicted or done anything wrong to a child... Right. Well, then you, you get your working with children check. I know, uh, but they can't, like, guess what, like, but it would stop people who do have, pro- like... Oh, exactly. And that's it, better than nothing. Yeah, oh, the, look, there's nothing wrong with the whole concept. <laughs> Don't you know that children are our future? Oh, well, they are. Teach them well. <laughs> that's and, what friends are for. <laughs> um, but, but I'm just saying, the, the, the thing yesterday with Richmond, this is, this is just... It's not even bureaucracy comment or nanny gone, state. It's just, it's just... It's just stupidity from both sides, from the school, and probably, you know, not from even Richmond so much, but surely the school could have sorted this out beforehand. Yeah, they obviously, I mean, the, do, you, do you think they just realised I mean, the guy, a guy with t- neck, neck tattoos was showing I was just about up? to say that, you know, Dusty's walked in, you know, with the neck tattoos and the whole shebang, and they've, and they've gone, oh, I'm not sure about this. But, uh, now, it turned out later on, just as a, a side to this, is the reason that the players didn't have... Uh, working with children's checks is that they actually under the uh, law don't need to until April, uh, till August 1st. So we- the law hasn't changed yet and they don't need it for what they're doing. So- Which makes the whole thing even stupider. Well, the whole thing in life with these things is underneath, underpinning it all is someone that didn't want to get in trouble. Yes. And didn't want, so they, they've been overly officious in their duties basically. Yeah, yeah. And that happens all the time. And oh, of course. It does. People live in constant fear. But that said, I mean, at least a bunch of bad habits haven't been passed well, on to these kids. Exactly. I was going to say the, the, the plus out of all this is that these kids you know, missed out on a footy clinic with some Richmond players. Yeah. I mean, but that, the clubs do this all the time. Does this mean now that all 700 AFL players now have to get a working with children check? Well, they probably will, but, but they'll just have someone in the... Sign the fill out the forms it. and then go sign here. Yeah, it's not a difficult thing to do. You just do it You've online. You've done it. I mean, I've everyone else has to do it. Like, yeah, but I don't have a problem with this. You know why? Because if 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 governments don't do something like this, yeah. right, and then someone who you can just see the front page, so you just have one person end up working with kids who does something who had a record. Yeah, and everyone's like out to get them going. Well, why isn't there a process in place? And yeah. then they put a process in place and everyone goes, oh, it's a nanny state gold man. <laughs> yeah. I think they've overdone it a bit, though. In that, but look, they haven't. This is the, the school's the interpreted school has, it the wrong way. But the working with children thing, I think for people who well, obviously work with children, like school teachers and stuff like that, but um, at like junior footy clubs and stuff like that, if you're coaching or you're in, involved with the kids, I think it's it, it's a – Terrific idea. This where they're erring on the on the side of caution a bit much is that anyone even on the periphery of this now sort of has to get one. But but they're trying to. I mean, the problem is the risk. The risk might not the the risk might not be crazy high, and that might be going over a little bit. But the damage, if it does happen, mm. is you know the risk of if, the outcome. If it does something does happen, if someone does do something. And they suddenly go, oh, I can't believe it. You weren't, yeah. you know, you weren't even, this person had access to change rooms and all this and you weren't even testing them. So it's, it starts with, you know, with junior footy clinics. Next thing, home invasions and carjackings. What, you need a working with children's check to yeah, do one? Yeah, you need a working with children's check for a carjacking. So. <laughs> well, that's a way. You could actually just get a permit to, a carjacking <laughs> permit, and that way the government could make some money off them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do, do you know in the boat? There's one thing you mightn't have heard about in the budget just the other night. Yeah, there is now a new tax on horse coupling. This is true, right? In when thoroughbreds, is this breeding horses? This is breeding horses when a 
when a thoroughbred coupling's a nice way of it saying is, it. It is a nice white word, but when uh, like when a mare is 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 bred with you know a thoroughbred stallion, particularly yeah. in you know, horse racing like Maccabi Diva, you know her, yeah, her yeah. kids, um, it's ten dollar levy every time. Ten dollars, ten bucks, ten dollars in the hand. So to speak, <laughs> it's a ten dollar <laughs> levy. I just can't see this fixing up the deficit, though, can you? No, no. Ten bucks every a... time a couple of horses get it off. It's they need to do something. And how do they them. collect it? <laughs> <laughs> the ten bucks on me. Yeah, you probably have. To, well, they probably do register them all. Yeah. Uh, now i are working with horses. Check. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, now it's funny how a hyphen. Can ruin your day. Oh, yeah. I know uh, what you're getting at I, here. I read uh, the other day, it was sent out that Pat Howard, who uh, works at Cricket Australia, many people would know him, uh, well, he's we had re signed with uh, Cricket, Cricket Australia, Australia for another couple of years. Now, I thought it said resigned until and I saw you, that little hyphen. And you've, you've cracked the champagne. I was like, oh, this is great. Now, they're now calling him the team performance executive. Now, he used to be the high performance manager. Right. Now He's changed titles. Once the high started to become a bit laughable, yeah. they've just slightly dropped that. Just team performance. Just team performance. So, so it, doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't have to be high performance. I never it, said it would be a high performing it team. Can be, it can be an average performance or even a poor performance. Now, Pat Howard's I job- mean, high performance, that's putting a bit of pressure on him. That You'd think he might actually- Try and make them perform at a high level. That's right. I mean, you can't have that sort of pressure. Pat Howard's job is to do all the horrible, nasty stuff that James Sutherland doesn't want to do. Right. Basically. Like drop blokes and... Drop blokes, fire people, crash through, changing the Sheffield Shield and doing the EBA, negotiate. That's his job. So that's why he's so disliked in a way. And he seems... But he seems to be one of those people where... There's always a role for someone whose job is to do the hard things, right? Yeah. It's the relish he seems to take in it <laughs> <laughs> that have really annoyed a lot of people and along the actually, along the journey, sir. Correct. And look, and the, the way you brought that up about the um, the hyphen, yeah, it reminds me. Do you remember this many years ago? I remember when Channel Ten used to have Sports Tonight with Tim Webster? Yeah. And it was it was openly produced out of Sydney. They had no idea what was going on in Melbourne. The yeah. AFL. I remember watching it one night when Tim Webster got on and said, news out of uh, the AFL in Melbourne, Nathan Buckley has resigned from Collingwood. And I go, what? And then they've gone to an ad break and come back. I'm sorry, I should have said Nathan Buckley has re-signed with Collingwood <laughs> for another three years. Exactly the same thing. But Was that as a player or as a coach? No, it was as a player. Oh, that, that's how long ago it was. A lot of Collingwood play- fans would wish he'd resigned. Yeah, exactly. Um, now, I, I don't know. Cricket Australia, they, they're so mixed. I mean, they, they were coming off such... Their problem is I can't figure out whether they're terribly won or re- well run. So the BBL's been a big success. Yeah. So you have to give them a tick there. On field, I reckon they've they, been all over the shop. But yeah. they've also come off an unrealistically high base for a long time. When we had the Warren McGrath era yeah. and all yeah. the players that went in there. That was just an insanely good team. Like the idea that we were going to be up that level forever is probably yeah. a bit. And know. I still think the success of the Big Bash League um, took even the Cricket Australia by surprise. That that that's that's become a huge success, sort of despite Cricket Australia, not because of Cricket Australia, and now because it has been so big. It, it's the classic story. They're all taking credit for it. Yeah. Whereas I think they just thought it was just going to be another little thing, and hopefully we'll make a few bucks out of it. Whereas it's turned out to be what may actually save the game. Yeah, I think there have been. I think Cricket Australia should get some credit for the BBL in that they very much positioned it. And I've read a few things on this where they actually went and looked at baseball in America mm. and a lot of other sports, and they really aimed at it being completely family friendly. And that's and resonated, they have achieved that. I'll grant and, you that. And that's resonated on a level that I think even they. But but that was their aim. So they got yeah. to get some. I, I I do give them credit for the BBL. I think it's also Channel Ten the way they've presented it. Yeah. Like they've put together a good package. I think another reason the BBL has been so successful is Channel Nine's been so bad for so long. Like the coverage of Channel Nine's cricket has and been has <laughs> lowered the bar so much yeah. and created such a desire to have half decent presentation that everyone was just that would. 
triply relieved yeah. that the BBL was there just you go. a breath what, of What if Channel Nine had done the BBL with their usual... Um, well, you see it when they do the T20 yeah, internationals. They, yeah, they just can't pull it off. And, no, it's and, terrible. And again, we blame Pat Howard for that. <laughs> Pat, Howard, Pat Howard's completely to blame for the Channel 9 commentary. Well, team. obviously rugby need to get him back because, yeah. you know, he set them up onto great, uh, absolutely cracking. Uh, and we're talking rugby union here. Geez, aren't they travelling well? Oh, we, oh, the Melbourne Rebels. Just, the Rebels are suing the ARU now. Yeah, everyone's suing each other. Nobody's going to the games. That's just because everyone cares. who plays is a lawyer. Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, there's a, the, uh, I predict the ARU at some point soon will quite happily drop the A and, and become just the Queensland and New South Wales Rugby Union. Oh, so they should. They really don't get, you know. They, 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 they're never, they're never going to pull it off down here. But right. it's, they, they actually have a tangible disdain for uh, outside of New South Wales and Queensland. They're oh, so right. inwardly focused. And outside New South Wales and Queensland, have an open disdain for the game yeah. too, you know. But yeah, but you can. It's palpable when you go to ARU events how half ass they are in Melbourne or yeah. other things. When the NRL, to their credit, put in a lot of effort around the storm. The AFL are like the AFL are like uh, Mormons in that they they are desperate to spread their message yeah. everywhere. <laughs> and like all- it's you know some religions are not prophetizing, yeah. and others are. And the AFL is the most. They will knock on anybody's door. They will go anywhere. They will yeah. put money into it. They will act like you know they yeah. they are so <laughs> desperate. Not since the Hillsong Church has someone been so keen to convert <coughs> people. You know, like that's what we need. Gillen up there doing a bit of a. But that's what the AFL some, are like. Some singing and dancing. The AFL. Is always trying Some to convert sweet soul people. Music with they Gil just they, they believe their message is the yeah. greatest sport ever all time, and they're trying. They go to China to try and convert <laughs> them. No one sent missionaries to China for years. <laughs> <laughs> they're sending everyone over. Oh. Um, so that'll be interesting. Uh, Dylan Walton wrote in regarding the ARU. How dysfunctional are you if you can't successfully run a sports team in Melbourne? <laughs> It's a good question, actually. Well, it it it, it is. It's a it's a double edged sword. Melbourneians will go to anything because they're always bored out of their brain. Yes, and there's nothing else to do. Yeah. Like, we don't have a nice harbour to hang around or beaches to go to. That no. it's not warm, so we go to sport a lot and events. But you know, it also the problem is there's so much sport on, and also Melbourneians. Um, while we do have that reputation of going to everything, yeah. Can be pretty, uh, pretty specific. I mean, we know we, we we'll, we know a dog when we see one in Melbourne. Yeah, right. You know, you, you can you can throw a million parties and a million functions and a million sporting events in Melbourne. Yeah, but if there's one that's pretty average or dodgy, it will fail. Well, it's also be up against other things. So the AAU, oh, exactly. you, you, know, you the... can afford to be um, um, picky in Melbourne. Yeah, because the the you know the array is is so great and. Rugby union, eh, just as we said, just hasn't kicked But the on. difference is in Sydney and Gold Coast, for example, who people often say, oh, they don't go to events, but they've often got other things that they're doing. Like, mm. you know, the, you go to Sydney, there's like a yachting. whole... yachting. Well, there yeah. is, though. Like, yeah. you know, like there's lots of stuff that are related to their beaches and their, yeah. I mean, you know, the, the, they've got a different culture because there's other things they do. It's not that they're all sitting at home doing nothing. No. You know, they've got cocaine. Gardens, <laughs> cocaine everywhere. I love how Beer Sydney gardens. is seen, like when they did the thing of all the, um, this actually probably paints Sydney in a better light, funnily enough. It's the capital in Australia of cocaine, right? Oh, of course it the has, only, but, but it always has always been. Always has been, but it's, the number, it's their number one drug. Every other state capital they released recently stats of what the biggest drug is in each capital yeah. city. Sydney is cocaine. It's the only one that's cocaine. Everyone else, ice. Yeah. <laughs> Your poor man's cocaine. Yeah, so in some ways that actually is a selling point of Sydney. <laughs> so. Because you would much prefer someone to be on the coke than the ice. Oh, because you know, if you can afford, they reckon it's what three hundred bucks a gram for coke. That's Is it? Same. I wouldn't That's, know. I read that the other day. <laughs> if you can afford three hundred bucks for a little tiny little plastic bag of that stuff, yeah. Well, you're obviously um, a successful, decent human being. <laughs> You've got a bit of disposal you income. You have disposal in- income. You're you're a good person. Or if you're just on the cheap and nasty gear, well, you're obviously not. Yeah, you're the is. opposite. You're a loser. Um, you deserve to be jailed and kicked. <laughs> it's not a not, not a 
not a fan of ice addicts, Serge. <laughs> I'm not um, compared to you, cuckheads. Do you, I want far better. Do class. you think there's um, you know, there's functioning alcoholics? Are yes. there functioning ice addicts, or is it just too potent? Oh, look, I'm, I'm not the expert. I, I, I can you're sit not, here. You're and, not on ice. I can sit here and make stupid judgment calls <laughs> like that, but for actual specifics, no. I remember one of the funny interviews I saw with Dane Swan in the paper when I was reading up before I interviewed him, and someone said to him. You know, he's talking about his drug use. Yeah. And they go, oh, you know, what have you ever taken? He's like, oh, you know, I took some recreational drugs. And they were like, ecstasy. And he's like, yeah, cocaine, yeah, ice. He goes, what do you think I have, mate? <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. Yeah, it's like even that's the yeah. line for most drug users yeah. is like, you know. No, anything else, but yeah. Yeah. Heroin and ice, they're the two where I think you're sort of going a bit too far. Um, Malcolm McKinger wrote in, if the NRL buys Channel 10, this was an idea floated oh, by... Last week, yeah, yeah. that was floated by your mate. Benny Elias. Benny Elias. Um, Sydney, successful Sydney businessman. Still baffles me. He's the dumbest bloke I've ever met. <laughs> Which you've met a lot of people too. You work in TV <laughs> and sports, so that's really saying something. Uh, if the NRL buys Channel 10, will Mitchell Pearce get to host the Bondi Vet? They remind me, oh, yeah, Mitchell Pierce, the bloke with the dog. Yeah, right? he pretended to have uh, some relations with the dog on does, camera. Does, does that mean? I like how you have to single that, that, that. That's the second incident in the NRL too. It's not the first time. Does that mean Todd Carney will be a judge on MasterChef? <laughs> <laughs> that ain't champagne. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I do hope the NRL. You notice how there's been no follow-up on that whatsoever? None. None. Like he floats the idea and says, I'm meeting with NRL power brokers yeah. this week. And yeah. then it, since then, you've just heard I think in, nothing. Yeah, influential NRL figures, which is almost a contradiction in, in <laughs> terms. Um, Ed Burke wrote, was Jared Waite's six goals and suspension the most perfect ever embodiment of a whole career in a single game? Gee, that's not bad, is it? And, and, the, and the suspension after he actually got the free kick. Yeah. So that, that adds a third level. But, yeah, it pretty much does sum up Jared White. He's got to be yeah. a, uh, one of – he's he's on the he's on the podium, at least, of the most frustrating footballers that's to ever, be. you know. He'd have to be. He reminds me, like, in a different way, but, like, Colin Sylvia, the reason we always yeah. have a joke about it, is Colin, um, is all the talent in the world, but none of the – Work ethic or consistency, yeah. or and, the, but with and, Jared White, you don't know whether it's lack of work ethic or just bad luck, or just it's not bad luck, just dumb. You <laughs> it's know, not bad luck. No, so yeah, I think it's a pretty good question from Ed there. It, 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 it does sum up his career in a single game. He, he's, oh. It shows that he has staggering talent to kick six goals in an AFL game and then get rubbed out in the very the same game. The only thing it's he could cracker. have done as well. Is got injured as well, yeah. and that would have really yeah. just summed up the. That would have been peak Jared White. Um, Matthew Holland uh, wrote, "Is GWS playing Lock- Lockie Whitfield this week because of the proposed government legislation to randomly drug test those who aren't working?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll that is that a one. cracker of a question. Oh, there. I think, yeah, I think we know where, where, where that we, one's going. Um, so he's back already, Lockie Whitfield. Yeah, I mean, he hasn't been selected yet, but, but the word is that he to... probably will rush, be well, rush the straight back into the side. Like, yeah. um, you know, I mean, you know, they need to, be, after their last quarter last week, they, they could do with a bit of his run. There's uh, no question. Oh, they, were, they were not Will good Stevie J week. get dropped, do you reckon? Yeah. He will? I think he will. This week? Probably. Uh, who does he play for if he gets dropped? Oh, he plays in the NEAFL when the Giants got their own squad in oh, there. Oh, do they? Okay. But the problem that the Giants have uh, and the Northern teams have, you know, people always talk about the you know the advantages they have. Yeah. But the problem those sides have, unlike the Sample or the Waffle or the VF, the Victorian sides, is the competitions in those states in Queensland, and New South Wales, it's so below yeah. AFL level. So well, it's that's not right. like when. You can drop them into the VFL or the Waffle or Sample and they're still playing pretty good footy. Yeah. But you drop them to the NEAFL and that's why some of these players used to say, I think Tom Mitchell used to do this, you know, he'd have like 60 possessions yeah. in a game. People would going, how good is this guy going to be? He's, yeah. He had 60 possessions last week. And then he comes up to the AFL level. Specs, yeah. You know? Well, that's what will happen probably. If they drop Stevie J, he'll probably kick seven. 
<laughs> in, in the twos, and I go, oh, we've got to rush him back, yeah, and then he'll yeah, probably yeah. struggle again when he comes back. Uh, David Lloyd wrote, um, now that he's been democratically elected, is it time you give John Coates some credit for his tireless efforts of going to dinners and getting 750 k a year? Oh, I'll take my head off to John Coates. I did Coates. say last week he was going to win, didn't well, I? You did. You did point that out. Um, and, he, you know, I must admit, Saturday morning I had a good look at that, and he did romp it in pretty comprehensively. Yeah. But, you know... It's, as I think a, he always was going to, though. Yeah. No, no it's good to see that, that you know, self-interest and pork barrelling and lack of ticker had no influence on the vote. Well, it's a win for uh, white men. Yeah. Uh, it shows And that white men need a victory it now. It shows that white men can rise to the top of <laughs> sports administration <laughs> and can beat out a woman for a job. And I think <laughs> that's something that so rarely happens. Yeah. Um, and the loser for it, the, the loss for it that comes out of it is it's bad news for people with cancer <laughs> because we all know John Coates has got stuck he, into We know he hates people pe- with people cancer. People who work with him yeah. who have are, are currently getting chemo, he <laughs> says need to, you know, he's not running a sheltered <laughs> workshop and they need to get a real life. So that's not good for them. It's a loss for them. That is a loss for them. I will love it, how the bullying that just gets... Will it be a win for Mike Tancred? Will Tugger get his job back? Well, he'd have to. I reckon the odds of him ending up at a job at the IOC or one of the various sporting yes, administrative bodies that are connected is high. Yes, I think so. I think it'll it'll, it'll be a like a career step up for or his him. new PR agency that he's about to, consulting agency is about to set up is about to get a lot of work from the AOC. AOC. Yeah, no, I think you. Uh, I'll be either shocked one if of those that things, doesn't happen. Either one of those things are, are extremely likely. I think. Um, it just shows you that, you know, sometimes the good guys can win. <laughs> it's so ba- it's such a bad look, though. Oh, John Coates, yeah. I mean, when they start a saying, you know, the taxpayers want more money and all this, after all that's, you know, they want more money from the taxpayers, and after all this has gone on, people are just going to be like, oh, you're the sports minister and John Coates rings you up next week. You're well, but what have you you had the Kitty Chiller nonsense. Yeah. You had the Still Knox nonsense. Yeah. The, you know, the Olympics before, like, the Olympic, Australian Olympic movement is so tarnished all over it. People are just pretty sick of a lot of it. Grant and, Hackett. Yeah, Grant yeah. Hackett. <laughs> old, old nipples. Old nipple cripple Hackett. Yeah. <laughs> There's just so many that are just, you know, turning in pretty ordinary performances. <laughs> um, Rob Boylan wrote in, this is directed at you, Serge. Oh, really? How much did Sergio enjoy the Lord of the Rings trilogy? Oh, I get it. Because it was filmed in New Zealand. Is that, is that why? I think partly that and partly it's a bit like, you know, I think a lot of the listeners look at you as the sort of the grumpy old dad that you bring up like, <laughs> you know, who shouts at them, what is this nonsense? Turn but, this noise down. It's, yeah. it's just noise. Yeah, that, is, that does pretty much something. And up, The Lord right? of the Rings, it's a long... Did you actually watch The Lord no, of I've the Rings? No, I've never seen any of them. Oh, right. I've actually never read, seen... Read the book? No, I didn't read Lord of the Rings. I did read um, Tolkien's The Hobbit. Oh, I read that yeah. when I was at school. But Lord of the Rings had always just, just been... It was, a, it was just, just out. <laughs> <laughs> when you read it at school. Oh, yeah, I read it. <laughs> just he, been released. I got an autographed copy, probably. <laughs> he did a book signing. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, well, I, yeah, I've I, never seen Lord of the Rings. I think Rob's read you right there. I yeah, think that I think, was a yeah. question where he very much knew you were going to have no idea. No, nah, no idea what you're talking about there, Rob. And the fact that it was filmed in New Zealand certainly didn't help. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the home of St Kilda. <laughs> um, well, we've uh, come to the end of our questions. They, they were good ones. Now, I'm going to give the T-shirt uh, yeah. to Matthew Holland. Is GWS playing Lockie Whitfield this week? because of the proposed government legislation to randomly drug test those who aren't working. Oh, Wonderful. S- works in the budget, works in everything. Oh, I second that. Uh, he's, he's crossed about four different lines <laughs> there, and, and I take my hat off to Malcolm there. It's a terrific question, and he'll be getting the T-shirt. Oh, well done. Um, now, I'll, uh, we're, both, we're back Tuesday, barring any injuries, yeah. but we should be right. Sorry we did miss one this week, and you can probably tell from my voice, and you can't tell here, but Serge is currently looking at me with one eye Weeping. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and that's not even the bloodshot one. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, it is really something to watch. And a swollen ankle. 
I've had to I've had to put a screen up in between us and probably shoot him at the end of this with his ankle. You're lucky you're not a horse. Oh, that's a big tip. I wouldn't be getting 10 bucks for coupling. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, um, so we will see you on Tuesday and all the best with your tipping. May uh, the footy gods show us mercy this week. Absolutely. We'll see you next week and good luck to all those people in China on Sunday. Ni hao. 